Hello everyone! A question that's intrigued many fans of the game in Credibox Sprunky is how all the various characters met their untimely ends. While the game's creator has dropped a few hints here and there, we don't have a complete picture of the events that led to some characters' brutal demises, while others seem almost untouched in the second phase. In this video, I'll delve into my own theory on what might have happened to each of the characters, especially Sprunky, as they transition through phases 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Let's begin with Venaria. In the initial phases, it appears likely that she fell victim to a forced infection from a snail parasite, which gradually consumed her from within until it ultimately took her life. My theory is that the parasite's ultimate goal was to achieve full control over Venaria's body and will. As we move into the later phases, we see Venaria, though it's more accurate to say it's the parasite within her, starting to emit an unsettling number of eyes all around her. This strange transformation might be the parasite's way of attempting to spread itself to other Sprunky, using a method similar to how plants distribute pollen or how viruses proliferate within populations. Next, let's delve into the tragic and particularly gruesome fate of Ratty. I suspect he may have borne witness to the horrifying deaths of some of his closest friends, a trauma that might have driven him to the brink of madness. There's a good chance that Ratty stumbled upon a moment where he saw Wenda in the act of killing another Sprunky, Unfortunately, Wenda became aware of his presence. In a desperate attempt to avoid the same fate, Ratty tried to hide, but he soon found himself trapped with nowhere left to run. Faced with the terrifying prospect of a brutal end at Wenda's hands, he chose to end his own life to avoid further suffering. However, Wenda eventually discovered his body. In a horrifying display, she proceeded to desecrate him by skinning his corpse, gouging out his eyes, splitting open his skull, and impaling him with a stick. Now, let's turn our attention to Grey's demise. Grey had a close, almost inseparable bond with Wenda. They were best friends, and she likely would have spared him under any other circumstances. However, he made a fatal mistake. He unwittingly witnessed one of her killings. Realizing that Grey was paralyzed by fear and that he wouldn't be able to keep her secret, Wenda felt compelled to silence him permanently. She picked up a stick and struck Grey on the head repeatedly, inflicting a series of traumatic head injuries that eventually led to his death. Finally, there's Jevin, whose dark transformation suggests his involvement in a mysterious cult. From Phase 2 through to Phase 6, we observe Jevin taking on an increasingly ominous and cryptic aura, which aligns with his presumed cult connections. By Phase 5, he has even lost his eyes, which could symbolically reflect his devotion to a ritual or transformation, marking a pivotal step in his chilling metamorphosis. Moving on to Wenda's story, it seems she was manipulated from the start by Black, who cleverly exploited her growing bloodlust for his own purposes. By phase three, Wenda had spiraled into complete insanity, which ultimately made her a liability to Black and Jevin. They could no longer control her actions or direct her as a weapon. Seeing her instability as a threat, Black decided to hand her over to the Colorbox Mustard Mafia for punishment and torture. By phase five, Wenda's horrifying condition, missing both her eyes and jaw, suggests she suffered cruel and relentless torture at the hands of the Mafia. Lastly, we come to Orin's fate, which is both brutal and tragic. Orin fell victim to Wenda's relentless aggression as she tore him apart with her claws. In phases three and four, his face appears to be horribly disfigured, as if it was ripped open by sheer force. These deep injuries make it likely that Wenda inflicted them in one of her frenzied attacks. By phase five, Orin's body has taken on a sickly green hue, possibly indicating that Venaria's parasitic infection has transferred to him. The parasite might have begun consuming him from within, slowly taking over his body as it did with Venaria. Durple, the creator, confirmed that his skin is so elastic that he likely overstretched his jaw, breaking the joint. In phases three and four, we see that he didn't stop there. He eventually broke his neck. By phase five, his face and body are stretched to extreme proportions, and at one point he's seen hiding. What do you think is the reason for this? Funbot. Most likely, he saw his friends in a state of panic, facing death or despair. Frightened, he may have even fallen into depression. In phase three, his mouth has a resemblance to Black's face. I think Black might have tried to influence Funbot, but Funbot likely resisted turning to the dark side and ultimately chose to shut down permanently. As for Brood, it's confirmed that Simon bit him. However, he survived because he doesn't feel pain. I suspect that Simon developed a bloodthirsty urge, biting Brood in the process. Despite this, Brood survived, but by phase five, he's been torn to pieces. 
Garnold met his end at Wenda's hands. She applied intense pressure to his face, bending and breaking the metal. Wenda then fractured his skull and sliced up his body. By phase six, visible wires are torn from Garnold's head, a stark reminder of his brutal end. Oaxiax's death was agonizing. Wenda tore off his face and body, and by phase six, almost no skin remains, giving him a chilling appearance. It's highly likely Wenda was responsible for his death. Sky, Wenda impaled her with four rods, inflicting grave injuries that eventually led to her death. But Wenda wasn't satisfied and drove the rods even deeper. From phase five onward, Sky's eyes change, resembling the eyes in the sky and the haunting version of Mr. Sunday. I theorize that Sky, overwhelmed by pain and a strong will to live, ultimately decided to serve Black rather than face death. Next, we turn to Mr. Sunday. I previously speculated that Black may have corrupted him and made him a follower. Now, looking at phases three, four, and five, I'm certain it was Black's influence. Note the countless demonic eyes on his body. He's practically made of them. Black's involvement seems unmistakable. Mr. Tree was possessed by a girl's soul, his life force drained. I believe he felt guilt over her disappearance and posted a notice of her on himself, signaling his remorse. This vulnerability likely made him an easy target for Black, who saw Mr. Tree as too weak to resist his dark influence. In the end, Mr. Tree aligned himself with Black. Simon, I suspect he may have conspired with Black. This idea arises because he remains completely unscathed, which is highly unusual. While other Sprunky characters are missing half their faces and bodies, Simon is entirely unharmed. In Phase 3, he's even shown holding someone in his mouth, further hinting at a dark alliance with Black. Tunner! Wenda shot him, and later he was shot at least two more times and tortured. Look at the green tape across his mouth. It seems it was put there to keep his screams from reaching other Sprunky. In phase five, he's covered in severe injuries with a fractured skull, and his music sounds like he's calling for help. Mr. Fun Computer. He knows too much. Though he survived, it's likely he witnessed something terrifying and wants to reveal it. Eventually, Black discovered him and broke him down to prevent any truth from reaching us. In Phase 5, we see his screen separate from his body revealing a face. Perhaps Black has taken control of Mr. Fun Computer. Pinky. She's very kind and likely knew something she wasn't supposed to. Either Wenda or Black might have threatened her, peeling the skin from her face and ultimately killing her out of fear that she might expose them. By Phase 5, she has extensive head injuries, missing an ear and an eye. What happened to Kluker? He's interested in construction, and his death seems to be a tragic accident while building something in their city. I think something heavy may have fallen on him, crushing his skull and flattening his head. In phase five, the impact was so severe, his eyes ended up in his mouth. I've shared my theories on how each character in Sprunky might have died. Did you enjoy them? Leave a comment with your own ideas about how they could have met their ends and who might be responsible. Also subscribe to the channel and put in a lot of love and do not forget to watch our previous videos.